I'm going to go over the basics of qualified versus non-qualified plans. So a qualified plan is a employer-sponsored uh, plan, retirement plan that's approved by the IRS. So a qualified plan, it gives the employer and employee benefits like deductible contributions and tax deferred growth. So a, a, a qualified plan means it's been approved by the IRS. Okay, it's qualified by them and the Internal Revenue Service says, yes, this is something that they can, that, that you can run. Now, this is a pretty confusing part of your life insurance pre-licensing exam. Uh, a lot of people get tripped up on these plans, so I'm gonna break this segment into a bunch of different videos and you can actually look at the playlist. I'm gonna have things in here like IRAs, Roth IRAs, 401ks, all that stuff. I'm gonna have all those videos broken out separately, but what this is gonna be is kind of a summary or an overview of what it is. So, qualified plan has certain tax contribution deduction benefits. So what that means is that if someone pays in to the policy, or not the policy, if someone pays into the plan, then what they pay in is deducted from their taxable income. So um, I don't have a sh form here. I wish I could write it out for you guys. Maybe I could on a, on a little notepad here, but take, think of it like this. So say someone has a $100,000 income and then they spend $5,000 on a qualified plan. Okay, that $5,000 can be deducted from their income and now what do they have? $95,000, I don't know if you can see that, but $95,000 becomes their income that they're taxed on. So the tax benefit is that whatever they can contribute to it gets deducted from their taxable income. So now they're paying income tax on $95,000 instead of the $100,000. So that's the basis of it. Okay. If you own a company as an insurance agent, you can actually start a company. And this is not tax advice, but this is just some stuff I know. If you own an insurance agency uh, and you, you create a corporation, what you can actually do is there's special IRAs for corporations that we're going to learn about where you can, in special qualified plans where you can write off like a ton of, the, uh, of money every year to help lower your taxable income. So it gives benefits to the employer and the employee for contributions and tax deferred growth. What's tax deferred growth mean? It means you don't get tax on it until later, okay, when you take the money out. Now it's designed to benefit the employees and their beneficiaries. So it's designed to be in benefit of the employees and help them. And it's communicated to every employee when they start somewhere and it has to be formally written down. It has to be like a packet that someone gets and read. And it can't discriminate in favor of uh, like executives or highly paid employees or, or anything like that or stockholders or officers. It has to be in benefit of the employees, okay? And it's gotta be a permanent plan. They can't just get rid of it. It has to be approved by the IRS and they have to have certain vesting requirements. So vesting requirement means like you have to be a certain amount of, at somewhere a certain amount of time before you can take the money out or certain contributions, are, certain benefits are available. That's a vesting period or where the employer will contribute a certain amount to it. There's a vesting period. Um, and then a non-qualified plan does not need government approval and you actually contribute after tax money. So say they have that same income situation, you make $100,000, you pay tax on that $100,000, say you end up with 70,000. Then you take some of that 70,000 after tax money and you pay, then you pay into it with the after tax money. Okay, so it's a little different in that aspect. In the pre-tax world of a qualified plan, the money is taken out before, that's why like if you've ever contributed to a 401k or what it would look like on your paycheck, you see the deduction and then you see your paycheck, you see your gross pay before taxes and then after taxes, okay? So on the breakdown. So they take out the contribution before your paycheck gets taxed. That's how it works, all right? And it's like an annuity, uh, deferred compensation. So deferred compensation is like when they take your money and they pay it to you later. Um, different bonuses, stuff like that. So in summary, a qualified plan has tax deductible contributions. It's approved by the IRS. Uh, can't discriminate between different people as long as you're part of that group of employees. And earnings grow tax deferred, actually on both the non-qualified and qualified plans, earnings grow tax deferred. And all withdrawals are taxed on the qualified plan, okay? So what happens is qualified plan, you put the money pre-tax and the tax is deferred to later. And then once you take the money out, then you pay tax on it, okay? Then you pay tax on it. In a, 
non-qualified plan, then you're taxed in excess of what you paid in, okay? Because you already paid tax on what you paid into it. So say you paid $50,000 into it, and you decide you want to retire, and there's $100,000 in there, and say you took it all out, you'd only be ta you wouldn't be taxed on the whole $100,000, you'd be taxed on the, the $50,000 that you didn't pay in on the earnings. But if you put in uh, $50,000 of pre-tax money, and then you left with 50, of 100,000 total, I mean, you're paid tax on that whole thing because you haven't paid tax on any of it yet. Okay, so that's the basic summary of qualified versus non-qualified plans. I'm going to be getting into it in this playlist, so you're going to want to watch this whole playlist here on non-qualified and non-qualified plans. And if you have any questions about the, um, if you have any questions about like what type, what the life insurance policies are that you're going to need to know about to pass your pre-licensing exam, you just want to check this 